So uh, welcome to uh, welcome from you know on my behalf. My name is Yadran Kaiser Shakturnis. I'm uh, I am very happy that I am here with you today. I hope that Open Science Summer School of University of Maribor is going to be splendid for you, and that you are going to get some amazing uh, lectures. I hope that you will enjoy also my uh, my lecture, which is uh, about science engagement and outreach, or however you can also call it science communication, science dissemination of science. Uh, it has many names, and uh, it's actually it's not something that uh, it is. Uh, yet part of the scientific curriculum at the many universities, not in Slovenia, also around Europe. So scientific research and uh, technological innovations and findings are changing society and the way consumer behave and live. Scientific research is basis for a progress. Science is a credible partner within a dialogue that participates in the development of our life and in our even more technological society. So, uh, conse consequences of science and technology are too important to leave them just in hands of scientists alone. And on the other hand, the relationship within, between science and societies is too important to simply hand it over to non-scientists. So the price of not communicating well can be really very high and may cause damage on both sides. Uh, so the relationship with among science and society looks like a nicely bound marriage. And society needs science and science needs society and that's after uh, the coronavirus uh, epidemic, this is even more blunt to everyone, to everybody who are working, who, who are working in this field. But it was not always like this. And, um, uh, and I will give you some introduction that uh, will that will ground floor to understanding why science communication is really something that it's not yet perceived as a, as a skill for a researcher. Um, uh, we um, Hogben, if you are Lancelot Hogben, he was a fellow Royal Society member and he was uh, and if somebody of you is um, in the field of biology st statistics mathematics he was a very famous um, statistician zoolog zoologist a biologist and in 1930 he was founder of society for experimental biology so uh, in 19 in 1936 he published a book mathematics for the million and he was um and he was at that time he was waiting to become to receive a title of fellow royal society at that time he uh, uh, coming out of the scientific ivory tower was something that was absolutely not proper and not seen very well so his personal conviction was that if, uh, and his belief was that if people would know more how to use mathematics in daily life, and uh, how they and how to how how if if they would know at least basics of mathematics, the quality of life and the quality of their decisions would be much would be much better. So he agreed with one with one person to published the book according to his, uh, you know, uh, under his, uh, uh, under his uh, fake name. So even years later, he first published the book Mathematics for a Million under his name in 1986 was, uh, uh, he, he, even later, so, so many years later, uh, he shared the, the story about uh, about uh, the authentic story about behind the book, and uh, he 
he was also, and he explored how sadly uh, that is that that sign is not stepping out from the ivory tower. So this is one story. The second story, I'm sure that you don't know, is even more significant. We all know Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan was in nineties. He had a, a, a he was he had a reputation of a Hollywood star. And in 1992, Carl Sagan was nominated for a membership in the National Academy of Science. So Academy, of, uh, Academy membership requires distinguished research scholarship, but not only, but not only that. So, so um, a considerable weight is also given to public service uh, as well as more political factor. So, he was, uh, he was nominated to become a member of National Academy of Science. Most uh, colleagues agreed that Sagan's research record was more than adequate. But when it came to uh, voting, he hardly got 50% uh, of yes votes and uh, he would need two thirds of a support to become a full member of National Academy of Science. So he was blackballed, which, is what, which was a surprising fact. It was actually something that, that was quite shocking for uh, American uh, uh, research, National Academy of Science and the research world at that time. They tried to, and, and this decision was followed by many, many um, meetings and, um, you know, and uh, finding out how can we damage control this decision. So after two years, the National Academy gave him a prestigious public welfare medal, which automatically make him a full member of National Academy of Science. So, which was uh, frankly partial, compensation for his earlier rejection and the damage was done. So what I would contribute here to, to, the, those, to, to these two stories that uh, in, my, in my work with scientists, I also, I also see that one of the most difficult pressure for every scientist that, that, that exposed himself is peer pressure. So it's not it's not um, the fear of getting uh, the fear of presentation, the fear of not being not have skills to 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 speak about uh, and share the story about uh, about the science. It's a peer pressure. And another uh, historical and for you as a scientist also important important information is that um, uh, it's uh, that the Sir Walter Bodmer. He was uh, also he and his wife were very they were very eminent biologists uh, in the uh, UK. Uh, he first published so-called uh, Bodmer report, and this Bodmer report really gave uh, came as a refreshment to British scientific community, and uh, with this uh, with this uh, report, um, they. Sir Walter Bodmer, they encouraged, they encouraged uh, the, that every science and every uh, science organization, every research organization should, uh, should uh, promote science because of the consequences of science, because society needs science. And he really supported and gave some ideas for science fair, fairs. And even um, uh, his idea was to establish Committee on Public Understanding of Science, which was actually the basis of a very vivid, very vivid uh, development in the uh, pu public understanding of science and technology within uh, UK and then within Europe. So why researcher need science communication competencies? Um, mm, it's uh, you, there are many ways that science need to need to um, to create trust, dialogue, 
science is transparent and uh, the, the research methods are transparent, although complicated. So we uh, scientists, they have to know, they have to, they have to be equipped how to explain what they are doing, uh, what is their research method and why the science is relevant for the non-scientific audience. At the end of the day, I always say, look, you get, you, th that's your homework because the majority of scientists, they get public money. So they share, they, they work in public institutions. So they have a public uh, actually mission to tell, uh, to tell what they are doing. And even uh, being, uh, um, and even me being a communication expert, my job is to explore the relationship between society, between media or journalists and the scientists. I help examine different contexts. I, um, I try to analyze the audience, the values of the audience, what would be the potential interest, the relationship that you could, that you could lean in and um, how to and how to broadly engage uh, with the science, uh, with, uh, with the target audience. So I work with institutions, I work with individual scientists, and I help them to create a story, a social context, and also a safe place to do it. So, and then, as I said, there is a many peer pressure. There is a man. Uh, there is uh, there is um, uh, many ignorance, uh, many lack of strategies uh, or strategic knowledge how to do it, and uh, you know to to make you to 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 um, to go only uh, a little bit deeper into the, uh, the the field of science communication i will present you a poll uh, where where they ask scientists what is their personal attitude to communicate their research with with the non with the non scientific audience so as here we can see they have a positive perception of science communication as especially more senior uh, scientists. Uh, sorry. Uh, then uh, we can see that they, they don't decide. Uh, uh, they don't. Uh, they don't dedicate enough time uh, to uh, uh, for science communications because, according to their uh, according to their opinion. They have to, their priority is research funding. And also, as we, as we can see, science communication is not evaluated or recognized as a proper or equal important work comparing to scientific research. They feel partly equipped for their job and women here and women are more modest and more self-critical in that. But let me tell you, uh, let me share you a little bit story about the women scientists. I, um, uh, I, was, I was collaborating with Ministry on Scientists on promotion of women scientists. And, uh, I, uh, and I encounter a very interesting article of, Ed, of science journalist Ed Young in The Atlantic where he followed uh, one year, he made a track record of all the, of, of, of the time and uh, of, yeah, of the time that he needs uh, when he speaks as a source to a man or to women scientists. And he, and, and he even published an article about it that he, did, he realized after one year that he need for every research article where he, uh, where he uh, uh, referred to a women scientist as a, uh, uh, as a source, he needed 15 minutes more for communication 
and that communication refers on uh, refers to he needed to uh, persuade her more than male scientists. He needed he needed to uh, gave her uh, an, a, a safe place for uh, to that that she could explain it very well. And he has to convince her that she knows as much as her boss knows about about the, the scientific the scientific topic of the of his article. So. Uh, the same um, the same scientist involved in this uh, in this poll also said that uh, that obviously their systematic education is not in is not uh, doesn't also uh, grasps the science uh, communication and even after being trained uh, on scientific uh, communication they. Well, they felt more equipped, but but uh, they would like to spend more time on getting more skills and communicate science more. They publish uh, they publish the the report. They and uh, the 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 key findings uh, were that the researchers want to communicate. They need training, especially women, and they also need some help. That research organization or research institute, they have to they have to provide them opportunities to communicate. And this uh, report was actually uh, uh, based on this report. The Swedish, uh, the Swedish, um, some Swedish, some Swedish universities, they started, they started a pilot program, uh, and the idea is that every doctoral student uh, in the last year of his uh, uh, doctor studies will get a thorough training on science communication, and then, uh, and uh, and then this would be the first training and then they would uh that they would uh, engage him with science communication with science communication uh uh training regularly later on later on in his in his career his or her career so why why as i said science needs society and society needs science but why it's not it's not it's not just about you know being in, uh, feeling important, feeling you know being in this ivory tower and preaching from the ivory tower. I would say the other way around. It's about uh, going forward. It's about being proud to be scientists. It's about justifying the expenditure to you know the decision makers. It's about making meaning proving. It's about providing facts. It's about being listened. And it's also, and if I say be li being listened, it's also about avoiding pseudoscience. So how to progress with a science communication in a research organization like institutes or universities? Uh, many times, uh, I encounter the pressure, oh, we have to go to media, we have to go to media, the media is our important stakeholders. But many times I say to them, especially in, 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 a, in a times of social media, I say, look, compare your research, uh, you know, we have a hand and if we, and we have, a, we have a hand and every hand, every Every finger on our hand it has a function. And also, if we compare science communication with a hand or your research with a hand, the relevancy has different meaning and different depth for maybe you have to address the decision makers. Maybe you have to address the local community. Maybe you have to address the high school teachers. Maybe you have to address the non-governmental organizations or engineers, but maybe you also have to address media. 
But if you only go to media, your research is really, your message and your story is really, really reduced. So I'm encouraging you think about, and I will also try to explain it more later on, think about how to engage with your science, not just in media, how to choose other stakeholders. As I said before, you, every stakeholder or is academia, industry, um, you know, users or other philanthropic or non-governmental organization, they have different, they look at the different angle of your, of your research and they need, and they need also different kind of different kind of facts that you provide different kind of arguments that you can support them uh, while explaining your story your research so your homework as as a research as a research institution as a research project or as a researcher as, as a researcher yourself is doing your homework to get better to know better uh, who who is, who, who should benefit uh, and who should understand and how deep sh they should understand your research. And of course, there are different uh, levels of, of organization of science communication. At the beginning, I said, I'm, I, I believe it's a set of skills, but it's not only the set of skills of you who are exposed sometimes when talking about science. I'm also, but also the research organization, the departments or research institutions, they have to know, they have to have some skills and they have to have their some competencies. So in the next 20 minutes, I will lead you through some corporate skills, some project skills, and also, uh, and, and we will finish with some, with your personal skills, how to be a better science communicators. So research or with a research organization, what you should, what you should expect. They should offer strategic su support. They have to provide, uh, you know, co corporate goals. They have, they have to know how to build reputation based on your research. They have to manage the relationships, not only with, uh, not only, uh, with, uh, with non-scientific public, but also with collaborators, you know, across the border of your country, with other scientific institutions, with, um, with peers, with the regulators, with, with other funding organizations. And if we look at some, for example, good case of science of a research, research organization that has a good, uh, that, 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 that has a good, um, um, I would say the resource, the, the organization of their research, res uh, research resources and the presentation of these research, res research resources to scientific or non-scientific public is CERN. They, when, when you look for their resources, you can scroll by topic, by format, by audience. So you can, you can actually personalize the depth of the research that you want that they provide. Another good topic is also, another good uh, case study is also, I chose the University College of London because I know their development of science, I know that their department of science communication, um, the members of this department, and I, and I know that they are really trying hard and they are really good case study of science communication themselves. So this is also one, one, one good case study. When you are entering on their, on their uh, webpage as a research institution, um, university, you immediately know what is relevant in this very, uh, very moment. So you can see what, what is research institution contribution to our society. And you immediately get the conclusion how 
how uh, how to how um, what they are doing right now and and you can go deeper or not depend how how uh, of your interest and the same apply to the project which is more narrow level it's a like a team a team task having you know having said that you that research organization has to give you some support including capacity building in a, on a project level you have to make you you have to be you have to have enough capacity to make a plan usually the research european research project they get they they carry some ideas some shorter plan long term plans some tools how 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 you do it how the team should do it but however when you are faced with uh, with execution of science communication you you are faced with you know the whole cake of and you know and different slices of audiences that you need to convince or inform or educate so you have to know them you have to know them well who you are addressing what is information that they are that that they are that they can receive uh what's your message what's your story what's their what's their values what's the context how how shall if if there is any hope that we can approach to them and e and if what kind of media they use what kind of media they follow and with this i i encourage you to explore uh to explore some uh the the web page uh of european project that i uh, collaborated with it's responsible research innovation tools dot eu uh we were working on this project for uh, uh, for four years, gathering and involving almost four hundred stakeholders across across uh, Europe, and we then piled all the best practices that we encounter in one uh, in one web page in a toolkit, and it's meant to be a toolkit for scientists, and we. And we slice this cake of audience into policymaker, research community, education, education community, business, and civil society. So, and for example, if you go and dive into this webpage, I don't know what kind of research you are doing, but you will you you can find a lot you can really find a lot of ideas and it triggers some approaches it triggers some uh some stories that you that that you can also learn from for example you here you can you can um you can get uh, a case study how they uh, how they uh did a multimedia resources on a, on biomedical research for uh, for children and um, and not only for not only for for pupils but also resources for teachers. Then you get you get resources how to communicate with uh, how scientists could communicate with with high school students via their prof their professors. So and here is also and it's and you can also uh get some very good capacity building tools you know you remember the hand so it's not always the media it's also some professionals so here uh the it the it researchers published uh the i uh, published some guidelines to it practitioners when developing a software tools or um a software um application for uh used uh, uh, by aging uh, or used by older people what they have to what codes they have to they have to implement in order to make it more intuitive for for older people so you can glance through 
and you can uh, and you can really and you can uh, and it can really get some help uh, to your to your team and again it's all about it's all about um, stories it's all about skills and uh, and understandability of the message so now here we go to you By the end of the uh, of my presentation, I will try to build up your personal skills. So how to be better communicator of your science. So start always start with audience. What's the purpose of your presentation? What is relevant? Who they are? What do they know? what is relevant of their knowledge, how simple they are or how non-simple they are, which, the, which context they will understand. They, they usually, the Slovenians, we always understand sport because and sport and society and science share a lot of in common. Sport is a lot of work, a lot of discipline, a lot of struggle, and it's objective. The results are objective. So you have to go to European Championship and then compare. And the science is as well. It's a lot of knowledge, a lot of discipline, a lot of struggle, and it's objective. You always compete with other scientists. So finding, you know, if, uh, addressing non or ve very lay public or, or lay public uh, with uh, with sport can be a good starter and i created and i created a set of questions that helps shape the message and the story uh, and the, the story that you try to try to uh, explain and the messages that you try to give across to your audience so who am I addressing, who they are, how they are familiar with the topic, um, how, what triggers their imagination, how they really think that what I research is really relevant uh, for their life. Can I address some of their emotions? What is the context of their daily life? Can my research or my contribution uh, that I do to a research to uh, a broader research can change their daily life. Can they influence? Can their daily life be influenced? How do we? How do I make them really good understanding of what I do, or of or of what we do? And what are the tools? What are the tools? And I said it's not always media. So you have to plan the story and you have to take, you have to really think uh, how to, to write, how to start the story. What's the story behind? What's your goal? And I always try to visualize your research with a pyramid, your research with uh, work with a pyramid. So you have, you, you, know, you have to have a good foundation, a good foundation which is followed by a research method. And then at the end, you know, it's like a peak of your research of a hard struggle is results, are results. But for commun science communication, you have to invert it. You have to invert the pyramid. So forget the introduction, you just start with the results. Your story, the lead of your story should be results. What is relevant? Then you go, you explain it. You give arguments, you give statements, you give information, you give photos, you support it. You, you argument your re results. And at the end, you say, you maybe explain some details. You maybe refer to your research article or maybe some other sources. And maybe you can even say, because of, maybe you can share your own story, why you are doing that particular research. Why, what is, what is drive, 
What is your drive of doing the research? And very, uh, and sometimes very crucial is that you support it with really very good visuals. I, um, on one of the conferences, I spoke with Felice Frankel. She's at MIT, she is, is at MIT, head of department for visuals, uh, for visual, um, for, uh, for, yeah, for um, design department. And what they do, they have, a, they have a policy that every published article uh, should go through this, her visual department. And they put, and they try to find uh, they, uh, a visual material that would underpin and create even more understanding of their, of their, uh, of the story. So a good visual material create, a, it, and it's not always necessary that it's coming from your research. Maybe a comparison story should create understanding when presenting publicly presenting, a good visual could save time, enhance attention, and even if you are presenting uh, personally, could help control, uh, could help control timing, could help control uh, nervousness, and, um, and you can use it, uh, for example, codes. The codes are, for example, black is the or uh, or um, uh, um, brown could be soil red could be something that is really very important something that is burning or something that it's or blood for example green should be something that it's poisonous something that it's um, that it's uh, gas for example a uh, blue could be water could be something that it's positive white could be uh, air so you could use if you are a life um, science researcher, you can use all these codes in order to present it well, you know, that, that uh, lay public immediately get it, get, get your story. So, and when you have, okay, you have, the you have the story, you have the visuals, and now think about what's the, what, what's the tool. Which tools shall I use or uh, for to, to, to get my message across right to a right audience? Shall I have an event? Shall we have a presentation? Shall we have a presentation only for a local community? Maybe only for a, for a I don't know, engineering uh, association or engineering society? Maybe. Shall we go to, to association of high school teachers? Maybe we should do a workshop uh, shall we mix the audience? How um, how we should uh, how um, how should we address media? When shall we in our time uh, in timeline where addressing media is uh, is right time to uh, to introduce our research to media? So shall we go to TV? Shall we go to digital? Shall we look for print? So. And then I always say, make a stakeholders mapping, make a message mapping, make the mapping of the wishful outcome and think about your reputation. And then when everything is settled down, then go and if you go, go with, to communicate with media. Science and media, they have many different, they have mutual uh, mutual, they have many different uh, objectives, uh, but uh, also uh, some mutual objectives, which is um, informing um, non, uh, informing, uh, you know, explaining what's going on and uh, informing about, about, about the relevance of science. But, but, um, Scientists are completely different trained than journalists are. And in Slovenia, unfortunately, is not a lot of science journalists. Usually the science journalists are senior journalists who are, who, who uh, through the, their journalistic career, they, they get fond of, of, the, of science, so they write about science. 
I would like to really make a uh, really make um, a note here that um, science journalism is a specific branch of journalists. Uh, in every, I would say, reputable university, they have a they have a science journalist school. Usually, uh, usually is based is uh, like a, a master. It's not it's it's not uh, at the start of their career, but the science the, the most but the science journalist they are trained to uh, to um, to know the scientific method, and they are uh, trained not to uh, com not to compare what usually the journalists in a politics or a sport compare. Usually, the journalists, they say, okay, uh, we compare, we, in a sports journalist, they compare a winner and a loser and then face them. In politics, they compare left wing, right wing, and then compare. But in science, they should know how to compare facts. It's not important that, it's not very uh, different that, that they compare different, uh, that, that they um, that they use different sources, but what they have to do is they have to uh, to know the facts, and they have to go to uh, they have to um, compare the scientists on the same level. So I always say to my uh, to the scientists that I collaborate with, uh, if you are invited in a very hostile environment where you are going to be faced with non with with people that share science and they are not scientists don't go there don't expose because the dialogue is not fact based or evidence based the dialogue is emotion based and that's not the way the way scientists are trained to explain their stuff so Maybe something that you could that, that maybe something to remember. So, in media, the editor decides. Uh, the journalists they decide about the story. They prepare a story, but uh, but uh, but the, you know the title of the newspaper article is always given by editor, and editor always gives a green light. Okay, write the story or not write this story. So. So journalists, they also they they also have a really not enough time. So they go, okay, is this news? Is this critical? Uh, can, and if you are not faced with uh, with science journalists who have usually more time to prepare a story, uh, they try the inclination of uh, of some of journalists is to make it black and white, which is not which is not really in a most uh it, which is not a very good context for a science for for a scientist and uh and usually they don't have enough time to develop a story format they uh they don't have time in to uh um to uh, use multiple sources and um usually they their story is based on very limited interaction. So you really have to think about it. What's in it for you and uh, with media? So uh, what is what is in it for also for you as a scientist with this interaction of media? So when you face media, you have to be prepared. You have to know how to manage it. Just this is um, interesting uh, media outlet science coverage uh, um, picture where you can see which one is is dri driven mostly by evidence. So how to control and how to prepare for to to media uh, presentation. In written statements, so in print, uh, remember 
the inverted pyramid and the 30 words that you choose uh, in the headline or at the, at the lead of your story to attract the attention, do it, think about it. And this lead is like an appetizer. And the lead has to be really, really more informative. And in the lead text, in these approximately 30 words, you have to really grasp all what's the relevant if, uh, and you have to attract them that they continue and following your, uh, your text. Always when, when uh, communicating with a non-scientific public, you should choose short sentences, simple language, a lot of comparison, um, change the language that it's still, that it's, that it's not scientific, but still tells a lot and explain a lot what you are wanted, what you want to tell. And then invert it and, and think about inverted pyramid. Think about that uh, even uh, your story as a scientist or researcher uh, is relevant for everyone who are, who are reading your, uh, your piece. Um, the first rule of PR is make it personal. And if you make it personal, this is just adding more value to all of your, to, to media, to, uh, to media interaction. With podcasts, I would say this, it's more or less uh, regarding the language is the same. Short, short languages, use simple, uh, uh, short, sorry, short sentences, uh, use simple language. Uh, you can try to answer your question. Uh, uh, you, you can try to explain by, by, uh, an, by giving some answers. So why did my group decide to, to research this detail within our uh, project? and how we were thinking, how this um, chemical material or chemi chemical material behave in this and this environment. And then, you know, and then answering it. So making it more, uh, make, making, a making a narration of your story through asking questions and then answering them. With, uh, with the radio, you are more in a safe, or podcast, you you are more in a safe place because you can um, uh, because you can you you can you you have you can have notes, but be careful if you are reading the notes, it's uh, it's obvious. So just make some points and then explore the points around your research. With the TV and social media, is uh, is is is. All what I said is important. Above that is also physical appearance. You have to look nice. Go to a hairdresser, um, have a nice makeup, be, be good looking, be the best version of yourself and pay attention to what you wear. This is, this is uh, really um, important. And when you are doing your personal, when you are doing um, uh, presentations, personal presentations. So when you are or guiding workshops or um, or presenting, be try to relax as possible uh, before entering stage. Um, try to control your body language. Try to find your eye spot, like a visual, like uh, in TEDx. You know, you, you the red carpet of the TEDx. That's the eye spot of the speakers at TEDx. So imagine your eye spot and imagine that this is your eye spot where you feel completely safe. So, uh, and if you don't, and if you are not, and if you are too nervous to move, don't move, but uh, just be, try to be as relaxed as possible. Try to make eye contact, do not lock your arms and try to establish uh, rapport with audience. Try to contact them, try to address them, you know, questions and some stories are always very, 
practical here. So uh, now the coronavirus actually opened, um, I would say, quite a lot of issues in science communication regarding what to do with someone who is con who is against you, how um, how they behave, how they who they are, uh, shall we? How shall we? Um, to what extent should we convince them? And I always say that that um, they the contra publics they are here to stay. They will not go anywhere. So we have just to learn how to deal with them. And uh, when when you know that you are dealing with some contra with, with some publics that are they are they are not in favor of of what you are telling or what you are what uh, you are um, researching or what what your arguments are try to think the same as with any other audience try to think about their values about their concern is there any common ground never try to be unpolite uh, choose the right timing to approach them of course write at, uh, write the proper uh language and uh, try to face try to address them and communicate your message with um with 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 explaining them um several solutions um entering in their addressing their values um making them aware of, about their impact it's uh, uh, maybe you can approach them also with, uh, with some showing the trends and some general benefiting from, from uh, your research. Try not ever argue the science and, uh, and uh, only proposing one solution. I was recently in one uh, in one workshop regarding science communication where we were, you know, considering all the all all the consequences of um, science communication after coronavirus virus epidemics, and uh, of course, um, uh, science in coronavirus was very clear that it's uh, the coronavirus was something new. We didn't know it was a lot of uncertainty involved in in all what uh, what concerned the coronavirus. So one of the ways or one of the possible solutions that came out on this workshop and that I will share with you now is that when addressing people who are you know, skeptical or contra, try to uh, step into their shoes as a critical friend. Usually, scientists uh, are uh, not very, they are not trained uh, to show, you know, uh, to sh uh, usually scientists are trained to be really very exact. So it's not, it's, it's very hard to say, I don't know, it's, I don't understand, I don't understand either, but maybe you can step into the shoes of critical friend like that, that you listen, that you say, look, I research this, I'm not very fond of, of this, but we are also learning, we are every day, we are reading articles, every day it's a progress, it's a process, we, we feel, we feel, um, we also feel some limitations, but science, the, the whole body of scientific evidence is telling us and is supporting us. So when I find this, I will come back to you and I will, I will provide you with, uh, another with another scientific evidence in order to, to, to convince you better or that you would know better. So. As a critical friend, you, you develop the relationship and you acknowledge the uncertainty in science. And then, and then you also listen to their fears, to their, to their skepticism, not just, you know, not just closing your ears and no, that's not scientific. I will not listen to you. 
that was one of the possible approaches that I decided to share with you today in order to, uh, to uh, when you are faced with, um, when you are faced with contra publics. So in a conclusion, it's all about your story that has to have the right message, the right context, and should be proper for the audience that you are that you are uh, talking to. And science science communication is a skills, and you do need training. And uh, in science communication, there is no copy paste really, because you know, even University of Maribor is uh, operating in a completely different environment that may be University of Edinburgh. So you cannot, you cannot, or, you know, or University of Hawaii, you cannot copy paste the solution. You cannot copy paste the things. You cannot copy paste the messages, the tools. Everything is really had to put, had to be put in a relevant co context. And, and you, and it's all also, uh, with every scientific presentation or with a, in a moment you decide to uh, to present as a scientist or you represent not only yourself, your group, you also represent uh, your university, your research a uh, uh, organization. So if you decide to do it, be confident. Uh, be confident and do it. And this and the confidence, should be uh, should be based on the fact that you, as a as a scientist, researcher, student, or member of the research organization, you do impact society, and you do create a better society. So, um, be confident. Go for it. Don't decide no. I know not to, not doing it. I know it takes some time, some extra time, but you will benefit in the general, but you will benefit generally in your confidence. That's how I, uh, that's how I uh, get um, and how I evaluate my work in science communication. So I would love be with you that we have now interchange and, and vivid discussion on science communication. And I would share you my stories regarding science, uh, working with scientists. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you. And I hope this is not the last, uh, that this is not the last interaction that we have. So I wish you um, uh, a nice time, nice study, and thank you very much.